11 o'clock. So. Thank you, Gareth. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to what is the last meeting of this uh, of the Archives Committee in this municipal year, I believe. Don't think we have another one after, so our last meeting for this year. Uh, uh, we do have a change of membership, so we are saying goodbye to Councillor Louise Gibbard, and I would like to thank her for her valuable contribution to the Archives Committee during her time on this uh, this committee, and also to welcome in her place Councillor Mike Lewis. Warm welcome to you, Mike, and I'm sure you're going to make a great contribution too. Uh, it's lovely to see you here. Thank you. Um, Gareth, do we have any apologies for absence, please? From Sarah Perron, a soldier. OK, thank you very much. Second item is, are there any disclosures of personal or prejudicial interests, please? I can't see any, Gareth, uh, or any hands raised that I can't see. None, Jeff. No, thank you very much. The next item um, are, is the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 10th of December. So may I have your um, approval that they are a correct record of the meeting? All agreed? Thank you very much indeed. And I'll hand over to to the archivist. Kim, would you like to take us forward from this point? And if there if there are any are there any matters arising from the minutes which are not on the agenda, which Kim can deal with quickly first? Any items that anybody wishes to raise? No, no hands raised. OK, thank you very much. Kim, over to you for the budget, please. OK, good morning, everybody. Um, as is traditional on the uh, March meeting, we're looking at the budget for the following financial year for 2022-2023. Um, uh, th you've been provided with a copy of the uh, uh, of the budget papers as the um, agenda item four, um, and it follows the traditional format just to remind members that we we note the budget we don't approve the budget in this committee it's uh, it's uh, noted but we uh, that's in the power of the the two two parent authorities to approve the budget um so if we start at the uh, the revenue budget for 2022 to 2023 is contained in the table on page six and um, it takes into account the um, uh, the pay award for the coming year and uh, other th other than that it's a uh, standstill budget in terms of non salaries um, as you can probably see from the um, uh, the table uh, the salaries compose the vast majority of the cost of the service anyway. Um, so, uh, and we are traditionally underspent uh, generally. Uh, if there are any questions on the revenue budget, I'll take those now. If any members want to ask a question. Um, I'll move on to the reserves. So the position of the reserves are that we we now have two reserves left. This is in paragraph three of the thing. That uh, one is a um, what we might call a fighting fund uh, for purchase of documents. If a collection, if we needed to purchase a an archive collection, we've only ever used it once in the time that I've been uh, in charge of the service, and that was for the purchase of the Neath Abbey Armworks collection. Um, and that remains the same at round about 20,000. And the training reserve is now standing at just over uh, £250,000. Now, we haven't budgeted for a trainee in the coming year. Um, this is an issue and uh, prob probably I will be able to um, report further on during the course of the year about this, because we are a member of staff down in we, in that we don't have an archive trainee moment, so it will affect our ability to uh, to return to our pre COVID opening hours. And um, uh, so uh, 
my current uh, proposal in the absence of a member of staff is that we uh, uh, will be closed lunch times in Swansea and we'll only be able to provide a service one day a week in Neath um, until such time as we have a full complement of staff. Um, uh, obviously, it's not um, uh, at the moment because the, the service is so underused that um, Oh, you know, it's going to take some time to actually move back to towards the, the kind of figures we had before the pandemic struck. So um, it's it's not currently an issue, um, as you'll see from the uh, statistics that the use of the service is still very much down. But that that is the implication of the the fact that we don't we don't have a trainee because we don't have them enough staff to actually maintain a service through the full full day and of course we're operating on restricted hours at the moment which i hope after the 28th of march will um uh return to somewhere near normal as i say we'll have to we'll have to be closed at lunch times because we don't have the staff to do to maintain service across the lunch hour any any comments or observations on that oh, i i just make the oh sorry mike yes carry on uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to ask, um, given that uh, we are given a reduced service at the moment, uh, are, can I ask if you're actively seeking uh, a new employee to fulfil the, the, the role as trainee, given that uh, it's, it's quite a, uh, uh, a long process to get, get to where you are at the moment, Kim? Um, uh, perhaps you know we could we the sooner we get a trainee the better that's what I'm saying because uh, we're all getting older and uh, <laughs> we, we, we yes. young blood coming Should into I? the uh, service. So uh, yeah. I just wanted to know what 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 what, what any progress on that uh, score. Thank you. Yes, thanks. That's a very good question, uh, Councillor Lewis. Um, sorry, should I uh, just uh, should I, uh, Professor Miskell, do you want to? Uh, added anything anything onto there before I answer Councillor Lewis? Yes, thanks, Kim. Um, yeah, I mean, a similar point, but I, I also wanted to reiterate that, you know, not only is the trainee post really important for your service, but it's, you know, it's a an important plank of career advancement for the future generation of archivists that these posts exist, because typically people who do archive training courses to get the qualification, they need this experience, don't they, to get onto these courses. So, you know, it's a sort of, there's a wider benefit as well, I think, beyond just um, the service that we all, we're all we all interested in. So I, I really hope that this has been reinstated as soon as possible. Sorry, uh, I, I don't know whether I should be answering the question or uh, allowing other members to speak. I, perhaps chair might decide. <laughs> we yeah. now have two people. Uh, I, I, yes. I will answer the question. I just want to. Uh, yes, well, perhaps we, we can to... get we can get the points first and then you can uh, yeah, uh, answer them in, in, in the whole. So I'm not sure if it was Jen or, or Peter next, but Jen, would you like to go first? <laughs> Thank you, chair. Um, my question relates to the future opening once COVID is lifted and also the work that a number of residents have been doing during the last two years of, of lockdown. There is nothing in the budgets to suggest any return to a, a support for publications of work arising from use of the archives. What's the, what's the sort of future of that? situation? Okay. I'll, I'll deal with that point in turn. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Councillor yeah. Rainey. I'll just, I'll allow, perhaps listen to uh, Councillor Rees and then I really ought to address Councillor Lewis's question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, th thank you. Uh, it's a, on a similar line, if and when the restrictions are lifted, how soon can we get back to having a better service in Neath? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Kim, so yes. it's, a, it's a similar yes. thing. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, right. So I'll go back to Councillor Lewis's question about the trainee, which was uh, uh, Professor Miskell uh, also uh, raised. So um, I think the trainee post is a valuable addition to it, um, the uh, service, uh, and it's necessary to plug the gaps in order to to 
to, uh, to provide the full opening hours that we did prior to COVID. I think actually it was very I lucky in a way that we didn't have a, um, sorry, I've got some feedback. Is, is anybody, is everybody on mute? Yeah, can everybody mute while they're not speaking? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, in a way we were lucky in that it would have been very difficult to have a trainee during the, the lock, lockdowns in the last two years. And I think as we move back to uh, normality, um, it, 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 it's time to reappraise the situation. But I think we were quite fortunate in the way that the, the trainee programme had uh, stopped at the, at the time because it would have been very difficult to train somebody when everybody was working from home so i don't think that's been a disadvantage but i i do think uh I'll, I'll report back to the next meeting on where we get to but i think at the, at the moment we're still moving back towards a full service which i hope also addresses councillor reese's question which uh, so uh the, I'm pleased to report that the Neath Antiquarian Society have uh, agreed on at their meeting on the 2nd of March that they would allow the Mechanics Institute to reopen to the public. And we are looking at providing a service on Monday, which is full access to the Neath Antiquarian Society collections and um, also uh, to the family history resources. But in both Swansea and Neath, we will be still be operating a service under a COVID risk assessment. So we can't uh, uh, we can't offer a full service. As we, what, what I'm talking about in terms of moving back to normal is uh, once we're able to operate with, under, without the COVID risk assessment in place. So uh, I think possibly we need to park some of those issues uh, and I can report back to the meeting in June as to how we've managed to move back. But certainly we will be um, increasing our opening hours back to um, nine to five but, uh, in Swansea and uh, on Mondays in Neath. And then subject to having extra staff capacity, we can move back towards um, the uh, opening hours as they were prior to COVID. I hope that answers the question. I think I've missed uh, Councillor Rain's question about publications, uh, 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 which was a separate issue, really, wasn't it? We we've exhausted the publications fund, <laughs> is the simple answer. So we don't have any money for um, future publications, and I'm afraid the sales from pub existing publications don't go into a reserve to publish more. They they go into meeting our income targets. So. Uh, the uh, with the um, rebuilding Swansea book, and then uh, we just had a little bit left in the the pot, and we we uh, reprinted the three night splits book, but that's totally exhausted the um, the reserve for publications. <laughs> I I think your your <laughs> your face <laughs> speaks volumes. <laughs> I'll leave it. At, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so that uh, so in Julie, uh, the the budget is duly noted. I hope I've explained the position with regard to the use of the reserves. Um, but the uh, it's not not a, a task of this committee to approve the budget or not, just to note it. So I think that is a process we need to go through. Uh Lyndon, I think you've just put up your hand. Would you like to say something before fin um, Kim concludes? Just th 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 thank you uh, very much. Yeah, I was just saying about about the publications. Obviously, that's uh, a worrying thing that we can't uh, produce any new ones. But is there a possibility that we can produce them online so that people can get access to them in that way? Uh, I cost less. Yes, uh, I think possibly this may be a case where we cross the bridge when we come to it in terms of um, there isn't anything nobody's uh, has approached the archive service about having their book published at the moment and the the world of publication is changing uh, quite rapidly uh, at, at the moment in that self-publication is becoming much more popular if you're lo looking at some um, you know notable local authors if we take for example Bernard Lewis who we published some of his 
first books. I can't remember whether he published one or two of his. Certainly, we published his first one on the Swansea Workhouse, and um, the uh, now he's self public publishing or is publishing through uh, um, a um, uh, independent publisher. So it is it is a changing changing world, uh, but uh, I think if if we if we got an offer uh, or an opportunity that uh, we shouldn't miss, I think we should be looking at other you know, ways in which we could publish. But there isn't anything that I'm aware of at the moment. I hope that answers the question sufficiently. Thank, thank you, Kim. Just if I might just make an observation from the comments that uh, members have expressed. I think it's really important that we don't lose sight of the trainee role. We can understand um, at the moment until uh, COVID restrictions are completely cleared as to uh, why it may not be needed at this time. But I do think, and I think that's a very strong uh, feeling coming through from the committee that that post is really, really important. I think it's important uh, for a, a number of reasons, but uh, a trainee, it means it's probably a young person coming in, coming into the service to be able to experience exposure to the work of an archive service such as that provided by us. Uh, but of course, it's it's for the future of the service as well. And unless we have this provision to be able to train people coming through, um, then the future is, is not uh, absolutely uh, clear then. So perhaps we uh, mustn't lose sight of it. And I hope the post isn't deleted. And it's, this is just a temporary uh, arrangement. And next year, um, we will be looking forward to a positive report that we are actually proceeding with the appointment of a, of a new trainee. Thank you, Kim. Thanks. Um, I think with, so I'm moving on to agenda item five, which is my report. And I think as we've been discussing the budget, that it's probably worth, I'm just going to rejig the order, but say that the table of fees and charges, which is paragraph six of my report, uh, which is at appendix one, um, it's a standstill from uh, last year's charges. And that is something that members have to approve. Um, uh, so uh, if members could uh, approve the the charges for the coming financial year, which, as I say, are the same as 2021, 22. Yeah. Yes. Has everybody like approved. Yes. Looks like it's nodded yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. OK. Um, going through my report, uh, we're still operating a limited service, as I um, uh, said in discussing the budget. Uh, and as you can see, the figures are really down on the uh, uh, thing, but they are up on this time last year. If you'll see, we've had 187 people in Swansea in the quarter compared to 26 at the quarter of the previous year. So, uh, but obviously these are um, minuscule in comparison to uh, how the service was before uh, the pandemic. And I think it's going to take some time for the, um, I think, for cultural venues across across the UK, it's going to take some time for numbers to to pick up in terms of um, yeah, use of the service. So I think that's just something we have to to live with. Um, that uh, we do our best to uh, to re return to normality, and obviously we're still waiting for full uh, lifting of COVID restrictions. So th that that's. Uh, paragraphs one and two. I don't know whether any members wish to make any comments or ask questions on that matter. Um, uh, I'll move on to uh, three and four. Uh, take uh, Kim, Lyndon's just oh, sorry. raised his yes. hand. Lyndon. Great, thank you. I think uh, uh, some of the uh, publications you put on Facebook or the uh, the articles on Facebook and 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 and, and Twitter are absolutely excellent, Thank and you. I think we all are, I I always share them, and I will retweet and I and, and get really good responses from them, and I think it's a duty of us all really to do that, so that we uh, widen the the reach of the service and people are then aware of the service as well, which is important. 
uh, but because they are absolutely excellent and I think all of us really have a duty to do that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thanks for the comment. Um, the uh, so we've we've um, uh, given sessions to two schools, um, where as uh, in outlined in paragraph three, um, and we've attended a number of meetings, uh, professional meetings, and I thought it was probably rather than just list them, it was it was worthwhile just explaining what some of the um, these meetings are about. Um, the National Broadcast Archive is an uh, initiative by the National Library of Wales, which has got heritage lottery funding to provide access to the archive of several Welsh television companies, including ITV, BBC and uh, S4C, S Pedwarek. And um, they will make the archive of those companies available in the National Library in what's called a clip centre. Um, and then they are proposing to establish a network of clip centres, clip corners, sorry, across Wales, of which West Morgan Archives will be one. Uh, the South Wales Miners Library will be an, another. Um, and uh, there people will be able to go to watch archived uh, television programmes. Uh, this is not unknown in the rest of the UK. Um, I went to uh, uh, Birmingham Library and um, Manchester Library where you can look at, uh, for example, old Granada programmes there. And uh, it's it's got the potential to be actually a really popular, uh, popular um, uh, activity to 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 watch old television programs which are not available online unless they've been rights have been broken and they've been put, put on YouTube. I know that that happens quite a lot, but uh, uh, in terms of actually accessing the archive, um, it, it can only be done through these uh, clip corners. And and in order to do that, the, the National Library has taken out a lease of a square meter in our search room so that uh, in order not to break the the rights uh, thing, that it's a, uh, one square meter of our search room will be national library territory, and and that's where people will be able to uh, to view uh, these these programs. And it should be up and running in June. Um, I think we're one of the first. Um, and. I uh, should just mention that the Wales Millennium Centre is going to be one of the places where this is um, uh, also made available and they are planning an awful lot around that in terms of workshops allowing students to go in and use um, uh, use the material for um, their own their own work in terms of developing um, film cap uh, studies capabilities ability so you know there is the potential you know we do have a um, department in the University of Wales Trinity St David uh, working with um, film design and so on so you know there's a, there is a huge potential here so it's just a seed at the moment really but uh, and it won't be you know in our, our current search room it won't be um, um, uh, hugely um, uh, no, a, a huge change to our search room, but it 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 it's got the potential. I think uh, if we if we're in there, then we ha have the ability to uh, to grow grow this f facility, and it should be something that will be quite popular in the uh, the British Home Stores, the the uh, city centre hub uh, thing, because it's a kind of drop in thing to to go in and 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 watch. Uh, uh, old old programs. It, it's very very popular in you know these major city libraries like Manchester and Birmingham. Um, the World Reimagined, which is a project that the archives, along with other cultural venues in Swansea, are being uh, um, uh, a project par uh, participants in. Um, it's a an artistic project for a series of globes around the centre of Swansea, which will. Uh, uh, provide a, an artistic interpretation of um, uh, uh, the UK's involvement in the historic transatlantic uh, slave trade. 
and together with the artistic project there is a parallel project to create uh, uh, stor stories and um, historical uh, interpretation around um, um, issues uh, around the slave trade but also around general history and it has the potential to um, um, educate, inform and also uh, um, uh, attract visitors to the city to come and, and look at the globes and, and we are involved with that along with other cultural venues in uh, in Swansea uh, all museums um, uh, galleries and um, uh, archives uh, are all very eager to to participate in this um, finally I've just mentioned the 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 Born Digital uh, Records project, which is called the Welsh Vital Digital Records project, which is um, looking at the um, uh, how we preserve born digital records. So, which ones that are of biggest concern actually are council minutes, which are, I know are on modern.gov.uk, but ultimately modern.gov.uk will say, um, uh, well, we don't want council minutes from 40 years ago or whatever it's going to happen at some point uh, when they say well uh, uh, what what do you want doing with your older minutes so uh, we need to have the capacity and all archives need the capacity to um, care for di born digital records so separating those from digitized records because those are records that started in paper or in photographic form or whatever but records that never actually see see, see paper nowadays and then and council minutes are a good example of that uh, i defer to councillor back who has his hand up yes sorry i i had a question about on item five on your on your report you just i think you um the penultimate paragraph uh sorry please peter which one is that the 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 one about the um city centre hub the um, oh, i haven't got uh, there yet all oh, right so when you said finally i thought you'd just been much way through no so. uh, finally with regard to uh yeah yeah so i'll, I'll, I'll yes. wait till you get there then <laughs> <laughs> right. yes uh uh those uh, that was a brief uh outline of the three projects that i mentioned in par uh, paragraph four and i meant finally with regard to paragraph four uh, <laughs> uh, i'll move on yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Kim. I love that phrase, born digital. Yes, that's, yes. A, that's a new one I've learned today. Um, someone's got their hand up, I think. Um, James. James, yeah. yeah. It's me, Chair. And I'm oh. sorry I was slightly late in. I was chairing another meeting of SACRA. I apologise. Oh, that's quite uh, all right, Hugh, and lovely to see you. I, I'm delighted to see your report, Kim. I'm very interested because I was in media you know, particularly of the old archives. Um, I'm sure my age now, I'm talking about as far back as TWW, Harlech Television, you know, yes. long days. It's very, very popular. And I think it's a, it's a wonderful educational tool as well. And it's a good way of getting even, you know, primary schools involved because, you know, a lot of those old films, news items, it really does date now. And a lot around this area, a lot of filming in Swansea, Neath, Neathport, Talbot, whatever. So I welcome that, Chair, and I think that's a good thing to take up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Uh, Jen, do you have your hand up? Yeah, thanks. I, it's My question is about the, um, the Born Again Digitals. <laughs> good to hear that people are thinking about how to preserve them but the other issue is how do you read them yes. because often the machinery just doesn't deal with them i yeah. mean i'm i'm on a machine now that there's no way to stick anything in no floppy disks or anything so i'll be very interested to see how this process is not just to preserve them but to keep up with the pace of changes of equipment, which will make them readable and accessible. Well, on this matter, I went to a presentation from a company called Preservica, who've been doing a piece of work. They were given money from Welsh Government to create a proof of concept for an all Wales digital repository. Um, 
I do have a recording. I'll, I have to consider it. I won't, won't promise, but maybe because I'm, I'm not sure whether <laughs> I'm allowed to circulate it. But it's um, it's about 20 minutes presentation of how such a thing might work, which I think might be of interest. I'll just need to clear it with the person who provided because the it was a Teams meeting and it was recorded. And uh, I'll just need uh, with the person who supplied me with the copy because it wasn't my meeting. Uh, I'll I'll see whether it's possible to circulate it to members. But it it was um, as I said in that meeting. Um, uh, uh, you'll probably hear my comment there. I said you've sold it to me already. <laughs> Basically, within two minutes they'd sold it. But I asked what what the indicative cost would be. But we have to bear in mind that obviously it comes at a cost. But uh, uh, the concept is it, the best that I've seen in years. So we you know we've been wrestling with this problem of how do we preserve digital records because the archives of the future will be digital records and and we can't just rely on the fact well we can print it out or we can put a floppy disk in the in the archive strong room or a usb stick or whatever they just won't be readable so um we have to create a digital repository so um i if i can circulate that uh um recording I'll 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 do that and I'll ask Gareth if he can uh, send it round. OK, if that's the end of uh, paragraph four, we'll move on to probably what is the um, uh, the substance of the meeting, which is around the city centre hub relocation of the archives, which is section five. Um, uh, I'm assuming that we uh, this uh, I'll come to section seven at the very end of just for noting, which is the uh, archive collections. But really, the 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 core of the meeting is is around this. Now, I had prepared a presentation, but I've just discovered that I'm not allowed to show it because it's not bilingual. So I apologize for that. But what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, just uh, uh, read from it because it does. Um, uh help me to just uh, get my uh, thoughts in order so um first of all um let's just go through what i've put in the report and then i'll i'll go back over uh the um uh the presentation afterwards but uh, if we look at the um uh, the report. Um, so a decision in principle to relocate the archives to the city centre hub was taken by uh, Swansea Cabinet on the 16th of December, I think. Now, I should say that there, there will be a separate process for uh, Neath nice Patolbert Council and Neath nice Patolbert Council will have to formally agree that as well. And I'm, I'm uh, acutely aware of that. But I do think the situation is currently a little bit fluid, so um, I think it, it would be better if um, it went through the process with Nice Patolbert Council um, uh, at a uh, at a later stage uh, when we know more precisely what exactly uh, uh, that council will be agreeing to. Because I think at the moment it's um, it's very difficult to um, to say well this this and this are are definite. So, um, uh, but I, I am aware of that. So, uh, uh, and furthermore, to Tanith Patolbert members, I'm uh, very prepared to attend any committee meeting or uh, for a agenda item or or cabinet meeting or whatever the appropriate procedure that Neath Patolbert Council. Uh, deems appropriate with regard to the um, wh where the report will go, whether it will go to full council or cabinet or, or whatever. Um, so uh, please raise your hand at any point if you want to uh, uh, ask a question on that. I'm, I'm uh, sort of aware that um, I may jump, uh, jump on to uh, the next thing, but however, the current stage of the project. Yeah, Sorry, Ken, council... before you go on, Councillor Peter, yeah. you've got your hand. Yeah, just on that point, Kim, uh, how how soon do you do you do you envisage Neath Talbot having to make that decision? Well, uh, I because I, I noticed from the report 
you know, well, what I'm reading is I don't think that it's uh, it, it was went through a Swansea cabinet, but uh, from from the comments in the report, I don't think that you were enamored with the with the decision. Shall I put it like? Can I put it politely like that? Yes, let's leave it at that polite uh, thing. Uh, yeah, I perhaps turn to Craig. Actually, uh, maybe um, I mean I think it, the main thing is that it it goes to passes through Neath Patobo when you know exactly what the right. uh, okay. the proposal is. But I defer to Craig, uh, who has put his hand up. Okay, thanks so much. I if I could just come in then by yourself, Chair. Um, yes, we are, will be having to take a report to our Cabinet, um, Councillor Rees. It will probably now be in the new administration, um, probably around the June-ish time. I've been liaising with Kim and my equivalent in Swansea to obviously gather as much information as we can for it. Um, we're going to have to look at potential some revisions to the main report itself and um, so we just, the main joint committee arrangement which established it and what our role is with the service so we'll be pulling everything together with a report probably now in the early part of the, the summer for approval from cabinet to, to commence with it what I've asked specifically Swansea for are some assurances obviously in respect of the archive service the security of the archives the safety of them going forward and once we got all of that we'll be in a position then to report it fully to MPT members thanks Thank Greg you. thanks thanks Kim yeah thanks uh, right, so we would now having passed that uh, uh, issue, then the next thing, uh, well, uh, first thing is to say the stage at which the the project has reached. So it's still awaiting for final approval from Welsh government with regard to the grant which had been applied for. Um, I'm just, sorry, I'll just go back to my notes. Um, so it's believed it's likely that an award will be made. Um, and this has been uh, uh, when the uh, the grant was submitted, and I'm not sure where we, what stage we were at at the last uh, archives uh, committee meeting in December. Um, it has been agreed, or when or when Swansea Cabinet uh, discussed it, and uh, Councillor Smith may want to come in on this one but that alongside the um, proposal to move the archives into the city centre hub that a feasibility study would be uh, would take place for a, uh, a new build for the archives on the basis that the move to the hub would be a temporary solution for the archives and um, a, a, an amount of the grant will be uh, made available for a feasibility study for a uh, for a new build, which both I approve and Welsh Government look very favourably on, uh, i.e. a purpose-built archive, which would start from the basics as to what is needed to um, uh, uh, to meet the conditions of uh, of an archive. Uh, at the moment, we're currently looking at a, an existing building and can we convert it to to meet the archival standards? And this is a little bit in, in the air. I'll go into that in more detail, but the agreement has been made that uh, uh, this will be a temporary solution with a view to a, well, I call it a history centre. And the piece of land that has been identified as uh, uh, where where this might go would be the the um, space between the two museums, between Swansea Museum and the National Waterfront Museum. Uh, Councillor Black, um, you want to come in there? Could you finish what you're saying first, Kim? I'll come in after. If that's okay. Okay. Yes. So. Um, the, an amount of money, once again, it's subject to the Welsh Government approval, but amount of money will be set aside for the um, uh, for a feasibility study as to whether an extension to Swansea Museum could be made, which uh, has be a history centre, which would also include the South Coast Miners Library and other heritage institutions which wanted to go in but it's obviously on the basis of the um 
uh, each of those institutions saying that this is a good idea. So it's not, you know, it's not possible for me to say that, for example, the South West Miners Library would want to go in. It's, it's their, their free choice uh, with regard to that. However, there is open to them uh, to uh, to say that they would want to be part of this this project. Uh, I'll stop at that point and uh, cancel. Yeah. yeah, thanks, Kim. I, I'm, I'm, what I'm not clear about is the status of this proposal, because obviously what you're describing is, I think, everybody's ideal solution, which is a new building standalone near the museum, local history centre. Uh, and, and I think what we wanted from this from the outset, but the cabinets have just agreed to spend 15 million pounds on converting the BHS store, which is a substantial sum of money is going on creating a strong room with all sorts of safeguards on, on the top floor of that building for the archive. But now what you're saying is that that conversion is a temporary conversion, even though we must probably several million pounds worth of, of conversion. And, and at some stage we want to undo all that and and go on to on to plan B. So, I mean, what's what is the status of this proposal? Is, is this one which has gone through cabinet? Is this a proposal which cabinet members are pursuing actively or is this just something which you think the archive committee should pursue? So, um, first of all, the the, um, the the city centre hub project, which, as you say, is, is, yeah. is that amount, the 15 million, I mean, that the archives is a small part of the the, uh, the thing and uh, in terms of the uh, investment uh, my understanding is it's around about half a million of that thing, and that is considered an acceptable for for the uh, for the period in which it might take to provide a more permanent solution that's considered an acceptable investment because we're probably looking at a five to ten year um, uh time scale for a new build uh the alternative would be as a uh previous meetings would be uh you'll be aware of is to transfer the archives to cardiff yeah and that's considered a more acceptable solution to transfer them on a temporary basis to the bhs building it's also a fallback if the council fails to secure funding for a uh, what I consider a better solution um, for, for for a history centre. Because right, there's no reference in the cabinet report to this being a temporary solution. In fact, you know, the, the report specifically said this is this the solution. So, I mean, is, is this a, an option which is this been agreed by cabinet or by cabinet members? Is Because I'm not clear what the status of this proposal is. Um, I don't know whether Councillor Smith wants to say something. No, th wrong? this this has not been presented yet in a, in a report to cabinet, and I think I, I, I I'm going to have to take withdraw from the, from the discussion. I think because I, I know the predetermination rule, uh, but I will will listen to the discussion um, and, and, okay. and and take notes. Yeah. So, so th this so essentially what you're saying, Kim, is that we want to go back to cabinet and say this is. Now a temporary solution, and, and we think you should be pursue this this course. Well, it may be uh, the permanent solution if funding is not. I mean, this is going to be a decision of Swansea Council, uh, and it's probably going to be after my time. I have to say because I'm due yeah. to retire in two years. But the um, uh, but the what what it is is a recognition that this is not an ideal solution for the archives. I mean, it it will most likely meet the um, uh, uh, British standard. Yeah. And I'll talk about that a, a little bit in more detail in, in a minute, but the uh, the the change is that the, uh, the feasibility study will identify uh, whether a, a more permanent solution or a more suitable solution could be found for the archives. Uh, okay. Councillor okay. Jones so wants to uh, okay. come in. I, I was just trying to get an understanding of where, where we're at. I mean, I'm assuming that this feasibility study will come to cabinet at some stage. Sorry, Lyndon. Well, it, it is dependent on Welsh Government funding. So, um, uh, well, I, I, I mean, I, I won't comment on this. <laughs> the, my, my personal opinion that I think Councillor Rees uh, probably summarised it 
quite accurately. Um, yeah. But Welsh government is not particularly uh, um, keen on this as a solution either. Okay. I don't know anybody in the archive profession who thinks this is a um, uh, great idea to put the uh, put the archives into the uh, the city centre hub. Um, and this is simply, I ought to say, this is not a comment on the hub itself, the hub project, because I think that's a really good one. And some of you may have been around the building by now, and I think it will be a really good, uh, good project. It's it's purely based on whether such a building is suitable for as a storage of a heritage collection and whether it can meet the British standard. So it's not it's not about location or um, uh, you know the uh, city centre centre location is great. I mean it's a really good thing, and I'm sure it will be a very good building for the other services. It's purely about whether it's suitable for storage of a, um, a heritage collection, which as members will be absolutely aware need needs to meet the British standard. Uh, Councillor Jones. Uh, Uh, you're on mute. Must be the first time. Yeah, uh, to follow on from uh, from uh, Peter, uh, really is obviously uh, I, I obviously the BHS building is a, is a good hub, uh, but we were always concerned about the safety aspect for the archive, and that was the big concern. But for what the hub is going to be, it's a good spot, and it's going to be very beneficial for people in Swansea. But really, the proposal we're now talking about is been it, it, what you're saying. It's been recognised that uh, the move to the BHS building is uh, obviously not fit for purpose in the long term, and it's there for temporary. And really, our uh, should have been Plan A instead of Plan. Uh, the move should have been Plan A uh, instead of Plan B. In other words, a new building possibly. And uh, really, it's down to the fact that uh, decisions should have been made a while ago about this, and then possibly we could have been on to actually developing that site uh, but I absolutely uh, I'm absolutely against the move where our archive is kept in Cardiff because I think local people need to have that access and need to feel those documents and know they're here for them to use and not have to travel to, to Cardiff the other point is you know if it's only half a million pounds uh, you know uh, spent to keep the archive there yeah, or work done to keep uh, the archive in, in that site. Half a million is a lot of money. Uh, Councillor Rayner. Thank you. I have to say I'm feeling a bit embarrassed here, having previously heard of a possible timescale for the idea to be taken to Neath Council. Uh, and now we find that that might not be the final plan. I mean, the problem with the BHS archive section was not just the security and the right sort of container to protect the valuable equipment. It was also the fact there was no space for people to actually access the archives in a way that is acceptable under an accredited programme. And the other question I have at the back of my mind was the report to cabinet mentioned partnership and the introduction of other collections such as the Richard Burton archives though it wasn't entirely clear what that meant it appeared to be really not the archives stored in the newer premises in the university but the residual miners library still strung up at Hendra Foylan. I, I just have a, how can I say, a feeling this has not proceeded in an orderly fashion and the starting point has been that much of the decision has not taken on board what an archive service was rather than just another council service. So I agree that a new centre between the, like, the museums is excellent, but what that is doing is actually admitting that moving into the BHS building was flawed from the beginning, and we have wasted a lot of time and money 
trying to squeeze it in when often at the cost of other services who were given the opportunity to move in but had to get shunted sideways once any archive information became available to them. And now we have this, oh, well, we can always send it to Cardiff. Well, maybe we can, but I'm not sure that Cardiff has got the capacity to take all of our service either. So embarrassed, a bit frustrated that this is my last archive meeting and we don't seem to have made any progress, except revealed that we have rather fumbled along without the proper facts and we aren't progressing as quickly as we need. Because if some of the Richard Burton material at Hendra Foylan is due to be moved, there is a time scale to moving that equipment. All this has been done, I don't know by whom. That's the strange thing. There is reference in your report, Kim, about an archive subgroup. Who are they? Have they got any qualifications? and indeed any interest or have they ever used the archives apart from a tour in order to have positive feedback into the steps forward so embarrassed can only apologize to neath members sorry um i just take up a, a couple of points there uh, I take on board absolutely uh, uh that you know the gist of what you say um the 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 move to Cardiff was plan A, as it were, until the before the BHS um, uh, proposal had was made. And I had made arrangements with the Morgan Archives because we we know we have to get out of the Civic Centre. So they do have space and you know uh, that that would still remain a, a possibility. So I have and have very cordial relations with our it's it's almost our sister office actually because we're the old historic county of Glamorgan so it's um, uh, that that's not an issue um I've forgotten your your second point actually I was going to <laughs> going to raise there um the um yes I, I think I I take on board uh, what you say I'll perhaps defer if any other members wish to to raise uh, any, you know, I will perhaps talk a little bit more about the uh, what what what's at issue with the BHS thing. But does anybody want to make any more general points, Councillor Reese and Professor Miskell? Uh, Councillor Reese came first, I think. Yeah, just came to say I thought we'd uh, discussed all this in some depth at the previous meeting of the archives and expressed our views about uh, um, the suitability or not. You know, I thought that we'd, we'd all gone with it, but the fact that the, the decision has been made by, uh, by, by, by Swansea Cabinet uh, for this interim uh, uh, situation, uh, does, you know, I, I don't think it resolves the situation at all, quite frankly, and uh, I, I I just wonder now, you know, where, what's the next steps? Well, uh, I think that you certainly uh, I will continue discussions with Craig um, and obviously I will come over. You know, the, the offer is there to come over to Neath Patol, but at the, to the appropriate meeting or if it's by teams to join you for the agenda item or whatever. Um, but I, I do, as I, as I said, a little while ago, I think because the situation is a little bit fluid, it's not really worth these patrol. But unless there's some, till there's something firm on the table, I would say that you would probably, you know, be discussing and, and asking more questions than than resolving the thing. But the the current situation is that we we don't know whether we've got the Welsh government funding. It's likely that it will include a sum for a feasibility study for an extension to Swansea Museum. Um, everybody in the archive profession and indeed Sean Williams down at the South Wales Miners Library likes the idea of a history centre. Um, and this, you know, bearing in mind the size of Swansea, uh, uh, Pache Neath Patol, but I'm talking about Swansea as the city and as a location, you know, a city that's a quarter of a million people would expect something 
of the scale of the um, um, uh, at the history centre. I mean, if you look at comparator cities, which I always compare with Hull and Plymouth, Dundee, the uh, similar sized cities across the UK, you know, they all have much better facilities for study of history than 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 does Swansea is a you know city you know, a major city in Wales second city of Wales in terms of what you would expect if you 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 came to this city and and wanted to to learn about its history and heritage I mean the same can also be said of the museum you know which uh, also needs has been suffered from a benign neglect so something that would uh, uh, boost the story of um, Swansea and its surroundings, and obviously South Wales Miners Library is the whole of South Wales, and it's you know it's a really important part of our industrial heritage. Uh, Professor Miskell has her hand up. Thanks, Kim. This is just a minor point, but I thought I should make it anyway, just because of the reference to the Richard Burton collections, just to clarify that those are not at Hendrevoil and those are in an accredited Sykes University campus. So, you know, it, it's important to sort of, you know, just clarify that, I think. Yes, yeah, the uh, the Richard Burton archives are separate from the uh, South Wales Miners Library, which, uh, uh, you know, obviously a history centre, it would be open to the university to decide what in what way they might want to participate whether it might be uh, thank you I south west minus did, library or, or... i did actually refer to the richard burton burton archives uh, and the new facility relatively new facility in the university which has accredited status anyway so i i think what is of concern is what is it left up at hendra Foylan and where that is going to go. Well, the plan, uh, yes, the plan is to put that into the uh, the city centre hub as well, um, alongside the um, West Morgan archives. But obviously negotiations are still currently underway with the university with regard to, to that. And of course, same criteria about whether it's suitable as a heritage store apply to the South Wales Miners Library as well. I can't say, I mean, I, I mean, regular contact with the head of the library that's Sean Williams uh, also who's also in charge of the Richard Burton archives and I can't say that either of us are particularly um, keen on this proposal I think probably least said the better uh, Councillor Lewis thank you Kim I wonder if you could give us a reply to Councillor Rayner's question uh, as to the makeup of the sub steering group and who oh, yes. them. <laughs> thank you okay. i knew there was a second question i knew i'd forgotten it <laughs> thank you for reminding me um yes the archive subgroup yes please uh, it, it's it's um it consists of the archive practitioners so it's uh, myself it would be sean williams uh, as head of the south wales miners library uh, and experts from welsh government so it's not a uh, group um, made up of uh, people who don't know anything about archives. However, the property services team also uh, and the NDT, that's the multidisciplinary team, the architect and the um, thing, um, uh, also participate in the meeting. But it's the opportunity for them to um, uh, to have uh, uh, to learn about what the requirements are of of archives in particular. So it's heavily weighted in favour of arch archivists. Um, yeah, so that uh, that's so, uh, what I should say. Um, you know, what I haven't really covered in the presentation is that um, uh, or what was in the presentation that I not not, not giving is the, uh, that the because we're moving towards Reba stage three when the floor plans are worked out. So there's an awful lot of work still to go into the floor plans and whether they satisfy the archive re the requirements of an archive repository, which is also something that Councillor Rayner referred to with the regard to, you know, a key issue is security. And um, 
so I think there's all to play for with regard to the size of the search room and the way that documents are transferred between the strong room and the search room, which is key to um, maintaining uh, uh, accordance with the standard because the British standard is based on three core principles, which are fire and flood well, with ignore flood because it's on the top floor of a city centre building so uh, it would be a big flood if it reached that floor um, but fire we've we've talked about in previous meetings and certain mitigations are un, un, being undertaken with regard to that with regard to security there are issues around the um, security of the strong room security of the search room and the means of communication between the strong room and the search room. Now, while we don't have floor plans, we can't say definitely whether those have been taken into account adequately, um, but a key communication point between the strong room and the search room is a document lift, which needs, uh, you know, that, that determines where the search room will be, basically, because a document lift needs to come down into the search room and into the staff area so you can't have you know a, a document lift which emerges in the into the public area or um, into the search room or, or wherever so that's that's going to determine the location of the search room and then there are other issues which are not security related as you know whether it's large enough whether it can cope with wheelchair access um, what uh, facilities are put in for other uh, people with with various disabilities and so on. So, you know that that is all yet to be uh, decided. And indeed, you know what we should share our facilities with. You know, and I th I think there's a discussion to be had as to if the South Wales Miners Library is going into the building, whether it's better for us to share that public search room with the South Wales Miners Library, or whether to be in the um, uh, to combine with the local studies library and in terms of the space that would be um, uh, allocated. But a key starting point is the location of the document lift from the strong room to the search room, because you can't have documents being wheeled through a public area in order to reach the reach the search room. And that's that's a, a security risk that would would mean that we didn't meet the standard and we certainly wouldn't achieve accreditation. I mean, uh, I should say on the matter of accreditation that uh, Welsh Government have, um, so we will continue with provisional accreditation until such time as we have been in the city centre hub for six months. And then at that point, we'll have to apply from scratch for accreditation. And the uh, accreditation panel will require six months of environmental monitoring recordings to, to show that the strong room is uh, providing a stable temperature and humidity. And also they will be looking at these issues around security and so on to see that they've been adequately met. So we can't guarantee our accreditation going forward. It all depends on the uh, the outcome of the uh, the construction work. And I think I, I recognise the problem that uh, they have at the moment because basically everything exists on I say on paper. It exists on screen. Um, but uh, you know it's very difficult to say when you don't you can't say where the str strong room. Uh, well, we know where the strong room is going to be, but where, where the search is going to be or indeed whether the strong room is going to maintain a um, stable temperature and humidity. Uh, it, it, we just can't say whether it will meet the British standard. It's the modelling suggests it will meet the British standard, but we, it, uh, the accreditation need firm, firm evidence. So they will wait for six months and, and require the submission of temperature and humidity readings for those six months. I think that's probably about as far as I can get with in terms of reporting. As you can say, it's still a little bit fluid, um, uh, but if any members wish to make any further comments, I'll, I'll close at that point. Jen, you have your hand up. Well, thank you and thank you to Kim for giving us the latest report. Um, I'm pleased to hear 
following Mike Lewis's reminder that this subcommittee now seems to have more professional knowledge by virtue of its membership, because I think for the last two, three meetings, we have only had information supplied by Estates Department, who I don't think really understood what was being asked of them. So I'm reassured in that sense, um, and I hope we can move forward quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from anybody? This is about uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, just just to reassure members, you know, I, I have taken on board everything that's been said this morning, and I, and I made a note of it, and um, I make sure that, that those issues are addressed in, in future discussions. I mean, um, you know, I, I don't, as I said, I don't want to predetermine anything uh, by saying anything this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank, thank you all for your uh, comments on that item. It's a very valuable discussion. I think it's it's true to say that much remains unclear as to what the um, what the what the archives is going to look like in terms of its venue, where it is actually going to be. But I think what is crystal clear um, from the committee is that we still do have this very clear vision of what the ideal. Um, then you would be for the archive service and I think collectively as a committee we are still striving to achieve that vision but clearly a long way to go before we can get to that point so thank you Kim that's a very comprehensive thank update thank you um, and I'll just pass over paragraph seven which is the the, the accessions from the thing uh, from the pre previous quarter um, and conclude my report there, yeah, if that's OK. If there are no further comments. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Are there any further comments or, or observations that any member of the committee would like to make? No? Everyone content? If that's the case, I'll draw a meeting uh, to a conclusion. But once more to thank you, Kim, for your excellent report. Thank you, everybody, for your contri contributions to the debate today. It's been very interesting and um, very thought provoking, too. As it is um, the, the last meeting of the municipal year, Kim, again, I would like to thank you and all your, of your staff on behalf of us all for your sterling work over the last year. You have once again managed to keep the archive service afloat, uh, pe to keep people interested in it. Um, uh, mention has been made of how we as committee members can promote through social media. But I think what you're doing, and I'm sure everybody agrees, you've done an absolutely fantastic job. And hopefully going forward with the lifting of restrictions, we will see some return to a more normal service and what we might um, and, and expect from a well-functioning and well-resourced archives service, particularly for the, the Neath branch, where that's going to be a little while perhaps before that's fully returned to normal. But please do convey our thanks to the staff for their work and they have worked like Trojans through the year, as I say, to keep the archives in the public profile and we're all extremely grateful. And uh, as, as chairman, thank you all very much for your contributions during the past year. I think it's an excellent committee and everybody makes superb comments and makes uh, an excellent contribution at every meeting. So thank you all very much indeed. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.